gather the congregation. I'm rocking for my nation. All right, all right, all right. You all know why we're here and what we came to do this year. This is only the beginning of a very long season, but game one means just as much as game 82. Now, we have some new faces here that I really expect to make an impact for us this season. We've already seen flashes of what they can do for us, but I expect all of you to go out there and execute just like we did in camp. Ain't no more excuses. It's time to get serious. If we play our brand of basketball, there's no telling where this team can go. So get out there, get warm, and let's go win this game. Here we go, my first NBA game. This is something I've been waiting for my entire life. And to be honest, I'm a little bit nervous. But I know this is where I belong. So I just gotta get out there and do what I was born to do. I hope I can make my family proud. joining us here in the start of a new season. This is Kevin Harlan alongside Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony with Doris Burke on our sideline. It's all about the Eastern Conference. That's where the action is today as the Atlanta Hawks get ready to bat. And it's their first look at this year's Pistons here for the first game of the NBA's 82 game regular season. In a season ago, Clark, they won the matchup, winning three and losing just one. And, and as you would expect, they came out on top in last season's series against this club, but no reason to expect anything different this time around. Exactly. Guys, they're clearly the better team, but you can't take anybody for granted. They're mm -hmm. all NBA players. They get their checks twice a month across the league, so you've got to come prepared and focused and ready to play. Now a chance, courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. The starting five on the floor. On the floor for Detroit, the big men, Tolliver and Drummond. Jackson and Caldwell both the guards. And it's Harrison at the three spot. Now Detroit moving it up. Finish off the break. Harris has got his first two points of the night. That's a terrific sequence at both ends of the floor. They block the shot and recover it for the fast break finish. And guys, you know, Cantavius Caldwell Polk, this guy screams potential at you. I mean, perfect size and length and speed for a two guard. He plays both ends. Right now, it's all about consistency for him. That's a look you cannot pass up. It's also one you should miss. Now here's Jackson. Defense is right there to the inside. Tolliver, and so he draws the foul on the shot on trip to the line to shoot two. And you don't ever want to get into the habit of letting the offense get to the rim. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, that's the message they were sending with that foul. Nothing easy inside. All right, now, take a break. Take a break. Two shots. First one falls for him. Well, last season, the Pistons didn't reach the playoffs for the sixth consecutive season. They're, they're making progress, but as we can all see, still have a lot of work to do. Yeah, you know, they were spoiled for a while there. How about going to the playoffs for 1996 to 2009? So it, it's been a rough stretch here of late, but you get the feeling that the building blocks are in place for another push. 
And I bet most people forget that the Pistons did make the playoffs for eight straight years before this current drought. It's been a long rebuild process for them recently, but I think they're making progress and moving in the right direction. They really can't allow him too many open looks like that. I mean, that's just inviting trouble. Jackson passes to Drummond. And boy, that looked like goaltending. Yes, it is, and so they will award the basket there. He got there late, but you do have to like the aggressiveness to go after the block, but that one's going to count. Atlanta's gone one or two from long range in the first quarter. They set the pick. Nice ball movement here by Atlanta. He'll set a screen. Here's Schroeder off the screen. Millsap inside. His shot is good, making the perfect two for two from the floor. And for the Pistons, they seem to have a direction and plan now that just wasn't the case before. It won't be easy to get back into the postseason, but I really feel like they are on the right path. Here's Caldwell Pope. A tad short, but it's good off the front iron. Caldwell Pope's got his first two points. They're off and running. Good start here. They've knocked down four of their first five. Horford kicks to Cephalosha. Pass to Horford. Millsap a screen. Six to shoot. Shooter passes to Millsap. And that is good. Millsap's got his third basket of the night. I tell you what, guys, it's going to be a tough day on this defense if he's got the A game rolling tonight. Here's Caldwell Pope. Corver with the defensive effort. Major defensive laps right there. He's not a player you can leave open for a jump shot. You've got to stay attached to him. You're lucky he couldn't punish them for it. Now here's Millsap. Seven points in the game. That's the ball. It's hauled in by Tolliver. If they could end every possession with that shot, they'd be happy. Nine times out of ten, that's an easy layup for him. To the right side. It's Jackson with the drive. Nice job coming off that screen. Perfect screen there. Set him up with a terrific look. Yeah, I like the fact that the setup was good. The screen was solid. But you also have to look at the fact that the defender didn't do his job as well as he could have. Now, here's Horford. He hasn't scored yet. That, I'm sure, will change. Outside, Corver. In the corner, Horford with it. Here's Schroeder. From outside, off the mark. Drummond, a bit of a disappointing season last year. Not so much in play, but people wanted to see a bigger leap from him. Now, his numbers are still pretty jaw-driven, yeah. but I think he's got so much there to give. He has a lot of potential, Kevin. And listen, I don't think his play was bad. He just had such huge expectations to live up to. I mean, player development is not a straight line, and it would have been very hard to have him take another huge leap forward. Sometimes you have that sophomore jinx. But I'm expecting a big year from him this season. Now here's Jackson following the miss by Al Horford. Took him no time at all on that one. Jackson's got five points so far. And the story here, Kevin, early on is how well they've shot the basketball. Very high percentage so far. And if you want to start a game hot, that's the way to do it. Now here's Schroeder. Back to Millsap. Knocks down the three ball. Ten points for him. Only took them a few seconds to answer the three ball with one of their own. Greg, we've got a three-point battle taking shape here. They get it back. Plays it up and banks it in. And that's now six points for Andre Drummond. If you battle for the offensive rebound and come up with it, you're guaranteed a high-quality shot on a follow just like he got there. Corver, no luck. Boy, even though he missed, you can't give up that kind of a look very often. Better to be lucky than good sometimes. Fortunately, they didn't get burned on that one. Jackson, that's good. Very well executed pick to give him all kinds of space to get that one off. Now here's Schroeder, guarded by Jackson. Schroeder kicks to Horford. 
shoots from the baseline. That's good on the jump shot. Just such a good shooter from that range. And you factor in his height advantage, uh, it's almost unfair. And that does it for the first quarter. Pistons lead by seven. After this break, we'll be back with the start of the second quarter on 2K Sports. second quarter just getting set to start and guys what's your take on the Pistons so far a lot of times the team that owns the paint is going to come away with the victory and that's what they've done here thus far yeah why change the plan until they make you and that's where they should continue to attack moving forward going inside And what a big moment here. We get a glimpse coming off the bench of the first official NBA appearance from Freak. You know, he's a great young player and even a better young man. So, so personally, I couldn't be happier for him. I, I know he's thinking about the game, but I hope he's able to take a moment to just enjoy this accomplishment. Well said, and I hope so too. I mean, as a player, you want to stay even keel but it's almost impossible. I mean, there's just so much that you've gone through to reach this point. It has to be emotional. Teague and Corver are the guards. Mike's got out there with Splitter, and it's Bazemore at the three spot. That's the group starting the second quarter for the Hawks. Well, we know prior to last season, the Pistons handed the car keys over to Stan Van Gundy. He had some early hiccups, but overall, I think they're headed in the right direction. He's a proven winning coach in the NBA. They are really getting the work done inside with their rebound. The defensive backboard has been controlled. They have not allowed a lot of second chances. It's been about one and done for the most part. And I'm not talking about leaving college. Yeah, I know you're not. That's a bunch of good rebounding taking place there, boy. Well, with Coach Stan Van Gundy, it was a very successful first year in Detroit. He's a guy who's going to build around defense. That's been his ammo. And mark that bucket down, folks. That's the first career basket from Freak. You know, it may be not the prettiest bucket he'll ever score, but it'll always be the first one. And the first will make it the prettiest one. Well, no matter how he got it, just a fantastic moment in this young man's career and his basketball life. And both free throws good from Freak. Well, with Freak Clark, there was a question whether he would stay another year in college. Really was a tough decision for him, but he ended up coming out after his freshman year. And Kevin, it's really hard to blame a guy like Freak for doing that. I mean, he's clearly NBA ready, and he's putting a lot at risk for every year he stays in school when he could be on the NBA team. That one's good, and the piston lead is cut down now to just seven on the bucket from T. Freak with it. Pass to Morris. Shot clock at five. Feeds to Freak from downtown. Rebounded by the Hawks. We're closing in on two minutes played here in the second quarter. Right side T. That's tipped. And he gets it back. Splitter kicks to Corvin. Nice ball movement here by Atlanta. Shoots the three. That doesn't go in either for T. And, the, and they're controlling the boards, Kevin. That's plus five in that category. And, guys, you know that 
rebounding is a huge part, a huge component of winning games. It's not a glamorous stat, but it's necessary if you're going to be a winning team. Well, check out that assist. That's a pair of teammates that are clearly on the same page. And guys, he's not the tallest or most imposing wing player, but Stanley Johnson has incredible strength and, and really unmatched confidence. One reason why so many were high on him in the draft. And while we can, here's a look at the teams that had the fastest hands in the league last season. Number five, the Hawks. You could tell by watching them how much they enjoy playing defense. They seem to have it. Chris Humphreys has checked in for Mike Scott. Here's Teague. He dishes it to Splitter. And the officials whistle a foul on the shot. The bucket's good. He'll go to the line. And the one thing Tiago Splitter gives you every year, Clark, is consistency. The numbers, the effort, the results, all very familiar every year. Yeah, his game is really built on the intangibles. He hustles, he knows where he's supposed to be, he gets to the right spot at the right time, crashes the boards, takes charges, he does all the little stuff. On the wing, Johnson. Fires from the corner. And it's Freak missing. The Hawks trail by seven. Right side, T. Played in with a nice touch off the glass. T's got his second bucket. And for Tiago Splitter, he's been a relatively unsung player in his career, never getting his number called on offense, receiving little recognition from the media. But, but providing tough defense in the post, he shot over 55%, crashes the boards in the 20 minutes or so a game that he gets. So that's been good enough to really establish a productive career. Teague with a clean look. That doesn't go in either for Teague. And listen, sometimes even the best of us are going to miss the easiest of opportunities. Johnson dishes to Meeks. He hits free, top of the key. He tries for three. And again, it's the Pistons missing. You know, getting back to Splitter, yes, you need superstars to win in this league, but you also need guys like him, guys who put the team first, will bust the gut to carry out their responsibilities on the floor, off the court, and in the locker room. You need all of that to be a championship team. Baysmore misses. Pistons leading by five. Pass to Johnson. Uncovered. Baysmore grabs the miss. Yeah, great look, but disappointing with the miss. Boy, what happened on that one, Greg? I mean, that's almost an automatic shot for him. Here's Splitter. He feeds it to Humphreys. Corver against Johnson. The pass to Humphreys. Just four to shoot. Here's Teague. That doesn't go in either for Teague. No doubt he's struggling right now from the field. Let's see if he can get it going this quarter. Johnson, the pass to Freak. Good, and it's Johnson with the assist that time. Freak's got five points now this quarter. And here we see the debut of Freak, the kid from Harlem. His first time on an NBA floor, and 
Clark, it's a moment that he's worked very hard to achieve, and his family has got to be proud. Extremely so, Kevin. It's been a long journey for him, but every level along the way, he's found success. Now, High school phenom, playing for a college championship. I wouldn't bet against this kid on anything when it comes to basketball. sideline with Doris Burke. In the break, guys, I listened in on Stan Van Gundy's huddle. He made no mistake that their plan was to run their offense through Drummond. Their offense is most effective, Coach said, when he is most involved. And they're looking for total involvement from him for the rest of this game. Guys, they're clearly hoping those changes have an effect even before this game makes it to halftime. Kevin? And as always, Doris, thank you. And there's the foul on the shot. He'll go to the line for two. And, and Paul Millsap, guys, the only player to lead the NCAA in rebounding three straight seasons back in college. A former second-round pick was kind of slept on, but now clearly making his mark in the NBA. All right now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. And that one falls for Millsap. Greg, you were talking about Millsap's ferocious rebounding. He battles inside, but Clark, he is so skilled. Yeah, he's just really a good all-around basketball player. He can pass, handle, step out, and hit the three. Very, very versatile. Uh, he makes an, an impact on the game a lot of ways. Well, free throw is good for Millsap. And he is in the biggest body at 6'8", Clark, but Paul Millsap, very effective. And part of his... Being underrated and underestimated, I think, is due to that size. But folks are finally starting to come around. That kind of production he's put up will make that happen. Now here's Schroeder. Defense is right there. Teague against Jackson. Teague kicks to Cephalosha. And that comes off the assist by Jeff Teague. And Millsap with over a seven-foot wingspan and also just a great nose for the ball. He gets you rebounds, blocks, and he leads all power forwards and steals pretty much every season. Tolliver with the bucket. How about the passing? They are moving the ball without any thought, without any individual agendas. Yeah, and it's really fun to see that kind of unselfishness. Really hard not to appreciate all the assists they've racked up. Outside Teague, wide open. Detroit with the rebound. Drummond's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. Bullock dishes to Jackson. Off the iron that time. The clock runs out, and we're heading to halftime. Pistons ahead. Up by seven. Stay with us, folks. We'll get back just after halftime to start the third quarter. Okay. Okay, guys, solid play so far. I like what I'm seeing. But just a few things to talk about before the second half. These are the types of halves where we are helping ourselves out by making clean passes. They haven't caused us too many problems in the passing lanes to this point. But we still have a half of basketball to play. 
But I can't bash what we did on offense. We were in good sync at that end. Let's make sure we stay that way. One more thing before I go. We can't let down our intensity. Stay focused, and let's close this one out strong. Welcome you back to start the quarter. Players had a chance to get hydrated with Gatorade. And there's certain to be some great basketball ahead for us. Millsap playing well. He has 12 points, and he's picked up six points from behind the arc. I, I love the rhythm his outside stroke has produced today. Here's Schroeder looking for his first basket still in this one. Checking out the group for Stan Van Gundy to start the second half. Jackson and Caldwell Pope, the guards. The big men, Tolliver and Drummond. And it's Harris in at the small forward. Here's Cephalosha. Finds the bottom of the bucket from 13 feet out. Cephalosha's got the first basket of the third quarter for the Hawks. Well, I tell you, last season was a big one for the Hawks and Coach Budenholzer. Their dominant season won him multiple Coach of the Month titles, and eventually he won the Coach of the Year award. Now here's Schroeder, guarded by Jackson. Outside for Corver. Dishes at the Millsap. Shot clock at six. Out of bounds. Detroit takes possession. Man, I don't know what happened right there. He just basically walked out of bounds. Detroit leading by seven. And for those of you turning in, we're about a minute into the second half. Tolliver for three. It's good. The assist this time from Jackson. Jackson's got his fourth assist in this one. These defenders are putting up very little resistance to the three-point shot. And it's killing four of the last five makes coming from long range. Now here's Schroeder. He's been patient so far. Nothing yet on the scoreboard. Millsap passes to Cephalosha. Three-pointer. And it's Schroeder missing. Just a solid performance on the interior. The rebounding has been off the charts. Yeah, you look across the board, it's actually sizing up, shaping up to be a great game. I mean, strong performances throughout, and they've really been strong on the glass. There's a screen. Here's Caldwell Pope. No good with the triple. The Hawks trail by 10. Schroeder kicks to Horford. And it comes off the front of the rim. I'll tell you what, folks. I bet he won't miss that shot next time he takes it. Good. And it's nine points for Reggie Jackson. Guys, they've had a solid start to the second half offensively. They've gotten good looks, and they've made three out of four of them. Jackson who made some noise about wanting a big contract to be moved last year. Ultimately, he was traded to yep. Detroit. Yep, Kevin traded from the Thunder to the Pistons, and it actually happened on deadline day. And it's Harris off the drive. And so he draws the foul on the shot, a trip to the line to shoot two. And if you go back, remember, Jackson struggled with the Pistons last year as well. So the team went on a losing streak as soon as he got there. The Pistons have looked good at the line tonight. They're perfect in four attempts. And they right, only now, made 70% of their free throws Two as a shots. team a season ago. Certainly room for improvement. 
And it's something they know that if they improve, can really have a big impact on their success. The first free throw is good. And Jackson will look for a fresh start this season. I mean, hard to play with all the drama and questions going in your head about pending free agency. Here's what Atlanta's going with right now. Splitters checked in for Horford. Mike Scott comes in for Paul Millsap. And it's Kent Bazemore in for Tabo Cephalosha. He hits both from the stripe. The Hawks were fantastic last season. After the All-Star break, they did slip up a bit, struggled against teams over 500. Here's Bazemore, guarded by Harris. That is good. Corver's got himself going with the triple, his first basket of the game. Outside Jackson. Move the ball and stick it too much. There's the pick. Morris, left side. The Pistons need to get off a shot here. Outside, Meeks. Again, the miss by the Pistons. They lost the last three games of the regular season, Clark, and really just limped into the playoffs. Some of it might have just been fatigue. Yeah, it could have been, and their play at the end of the season did leak into the playoffs, Kevin. I mean, you can see very quickly that they weren't the same team that looked so dominant during the regular season. Second half here. We're just over three and a half minutes into it. Jackson. Morris kicks to Jackson. Fires for three. And that one's good. Jackson's got 12. And just a little bit ragged defensively there, Clark. Now Schroeder. He hasn't yet put up any points in this one. Scott dishes to Corver. They grab their own miss. Here's Schroeder. No good with the triple. He's really lacking in confidence out there. Zero field goals made so far in this game. And Harris wide open. He shoots off target from outside. Shirks it to Bazemore. And he jams it with authority. Cutting into that lead a little bit. Way to finish. And the basket is still shaking. Oh, I mean, he has got power in bunches on that two hand. There's the pick. Jackson passes to Baines. It's deflected. Now here's Schroeder. Defense right on him. Baysmore misses. Excellent. Really solid job, actually, by the defense to get in his way as he was going up for that one. Goes up the baseline. And again, it's the Pistons missing. The Hawks trail by 10. Kicks it to Schroeder. Goes up from the top of the key. That's short off the rim. And with him missing literally everything he's put up today, you can see why the score is what it is. Harris dishes to Morris. Bazemore grabs the miss. You can see he just rushed that a little bit. Lost the focus, I think. Rejected by Harris. And even three-on-three -three break. Nice D from Scott. Atlanta's gone one of four in three-point shots here in the third. Here's Bazemore, covered by Morris. Scott kicks to Corver. Scott with a screen on Jackson. Here's Schroeder. No good. Well, through three quarters of play, down double digits, it may be difficult to overcome. Pistons lead by 10. Don't go anywhere. The final quarter is coming up next on 2K Sports. And thanks for joining us, folks. The fourth quarter of play should begin momentarily. Pistons leading by 10. Teague out there with Cephalosha. Then there's Horford. 
Then it's Chris Humphreys, and it's Millsap in at the small forward position. So that's the Hawks' five. Drummond passes to Bullock. Lock at six. Let's go. Good, he hits the jump shot. Bullock's got the fourth quarter going with the first basket of the period here for the Pistons. Outside Teague. And he drops in the way up off the glass. Nice work on the inside. Hard to get that one up and over the big fella. Well, it's not supposed to be easy down there. And a little artistry on the inside helped him make it happen. And Drummond kicks to Tolliver. Over to the wing. There's the pick. Baseline J on the way. And Caldwell Pope gets the basket. And the Pistons lead by 12. Hawks shooting a meager 37% for the game. Picked by Horford. And T, here we go. Oh. <laughs> and how about the execution on that play? The screen was set up in exactly the right spot. And the finish wasn't too bad either. <laughs> perfectly designed and perfectly executed. The feed to Johnson. He kicks it to Caldwell Pope. Off the screen, and off the front iron, and in it goes. A lot of space right there to get that shot off. Not a very good job of the defender getting over the top of that screen in that particular play. Some defensive breakdowns are starting to show up now. Their last four buckets allowed have come from very close range. Yeah, high percentage shots are what they are getting in terms of the attempts, and that's just not going to get it done. They've got that to figure it out. And, and guarding him on the perimeter isn't a priority for them right now, but if this continues, it will be. There's the dish to Humphreys. It's Drummond with the rebound. Drummond's got five rebounds tonight. Here's Bullock, Millsap covering. Down low. Here's Trummond. Power down with both hands. Boy, he That's threw out some punishment with that two-hand throwdown. And, and Clark, now's the time to do it. Continue to attack that rim. And T, here we go. Nine feet out. Rebound, Detroit. Johnson's got three rebounds now in this one. And you know what? He's just not on his game, no doubt about it. Their deficit isn't totally on him, but he has not been an asset for his team. That shot by Caldwell Pope, no good. The Hawks trail by 15. Outside Teague. Picked by Horford. Now here is Cephalosha. Tight defense on him. Horford up top. High post try. Shot is off. Now the Pistons take it the other way. And a little over three and a half minutes in the books so far here in the fourth. Johnson outside for the three. Count the bucket. Johnson's got a pair of threes here in the fourth quarter for the Pistons. And they clearly are just destroying this group right now from the three-point line. Yeah, and the defense knows it. I mean, they are fully stretched out trying to stop the three-point shot and still haven't been able to do it. And the shot is good. Really good job there. That's the definition of the inside-out game. Here's Bullock. Out to the right wing. Pistons passing it around. Drummond the screen. Here's Caldwell Pope. Misses off the right iron. Good little two-man action there, but they just can't get the shot to fall. Yeah, but that was a beauty. Good-looking shot, well-executed play. I wouldn't be surprised to see them go back to it. Picked by Horford. T kicks to Humphreys. Detroit with the rebound. And tonight's battle is going to end with a very clear winner, leaving nothing to chance. Impressive win for Detroit. They found a great rhythm from long range. They sure did, Kevin. Every time they left a man open deep, he get a good look at the basket. And they didn't hesitate, and the aggressiveness paid off. And it'll go down as their first official win of the new year. 
They can chalk this one up, but these two teams will see plenty more of one another before the season's over. And, Greg, we know familiarity breeds contempt. I would expect things to become more heated as these teams face each other going forward. And when you look back at this one, what an amazing performance this was for Drummond. Every inch of the floor was his tonight as he came out and injected an energy into every play. And this is going to be a fantastic result for them. No win on the road comes easy. Not in the NBA they don't. And trust me, they're going to take a little extra pleasure in this win, having silenced an entire building of hostile fans. Detroit dictating the flow. They've given up just eight points in the fourth quarter. Here's Bullock. And so Detroit takes this one by a big margin. A resounding victory for them. And Greg in enemy territory, no less. And that's exactly right. But with the way they controlled the game and, and just completely took the crowd out of it, that's how to get it done on the road. And that about does it for the first game of the new NBA season. This is Kevin Harlan saying thank you for watching. Now we'll send it up to the award-winning Ernie Johnson, who is standing by for the post-game show. The 2K Sports Post Game Show. Welcome back, everybody. Ernie Johnson here along with Shaq and the Jet as we present our Jordan player of the game, Andre Drummond. Kenny, what did you think? Well, Andre Drummond asserted himself in a big way in this game. He is a terrifying presence, and tonight he was fully motivated and engaged. His rebounding on both ends of the court has always been sensational. The man was just a monster in the paint. His accuracy from the field was pretty eye-catching. I mean, if he was shooting the ball, it was going in. You rarely see a performance like this with this crazy high shooting percentage. Wow. And that's it for our broadcast here tonight. But we're just getting started on a new season in the NBA for Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith, Kevin Harlan, and the entire 2K Sports crew. I'm Ernie Johnson. We'll see you again soon.